Hi class, uh, this week we're going to be talking about bullying. I hope that bullying is something that you haven't had to put up with much during your elementary or high school years, but it's certainly something that everyone from the time of elementary school and into high school will experience. Furthermore, I want to make sure that you realize that even when you think that you're just teasing someone or being playful, that you yourself do not become the bully. Now, this is a lot different than just dealing with someone who is negative or toxic, as we like to say, someone who has toxic energy. Someone who's a bully is purposely picking on you or trying to hurt you or cause discomfort for you using words or actions on purpose. Sometimes people can inadvertently make you feel some kind of way, but a bully will always do this with the intention to hurt you and put you down. And sometimes that intention is simply to make him or her feel better about themselves, but it doesn't mean that you should have to tolerate it. Hopefully, by going through this presentation, you'll realize that not only is bullying pretty common and you shouldn't feel terrible if it's happened to you, it shouldn't make you feel less secure. If anything, you should be empowered, understand how to identify it, and what to do when you experience it. Take a look at the familiar faces on this slide. What do these men and women have in common? Well, you probably guessed already that they were all once the victim of bullying. I include it at the start of our lesson because I want you to know that it's not just a stereotypical kid in class who gets picked on. Comics, actors, pop stars, and famous celebrities, many were once the victim of a form of bullying. For many of them, their bullying has followed them into their careers and adulthood. But it hasn't stopped them from pursuing their dreams. And it's my hope that after this lesson, you will not stop pursuing yours. Just because someone is jealous of you or wants to bring you down does not mean that you're going to let them succeed. If you look at some of your favorite celebrities, you'll notice that a lot of times in the comic sections, people pick on them or bully them, and yet they persist. My intention and my hope is that you will too. When you know that you are going to ask someone for help and you become comfortable with someone that you trust to talk about bullying, you'll find that you are more ready to combat conflict and stand up for yourself when you encounter an episode of bullying. Celebrities, like you, are often picked on because they're willing to stand out and endure the craft or a form of art that they find enjoyable. Bullies will often become jealous of popularity or attention or your talent and will attempt to bring you down. We not only learn from celebrities who have survived bullying that it happens to everyone and that you shouldn't feel some kind of way about being picked on or ever feel less than human, but you should acknowledge that you have been picked on. Acknowledge that you have been bullied that you are not weak, but strong. Use it as a source of light to light the way, the path towards feeling more secure and empowered so that people who follow you in real life or on social media will also learn to feel just as secure. I think when it comes to bullying these days, the most common form is cyberbullying. People trolling you on Instagram or posting something inappropriate about you on some other form of social media is often done with the intention to inflict negativity on you. But what you may not be apt to identify is when bullying is happening in real time, in real life. So let's start by identifying exactly what bullying is. It's a repeated, aggressive behavior where a person in a position of power abuses that power to hurt you physically or emotionally. Now, most often it is going to be someone in your class. Sometimes it could be a teacher or a coach or someone in your community. So do not be afraid to speak to someone that you trust in a position of authority to identify the bully. So let's think of an example of something from a class. If someone has more influence than you at school, like someone who's more popular, and they use that influence to get the teachers or the classmates' attention to notice that you're doing something different and calling you into question about whether you should be doing that or not, or perhaps you should be punished or ridiculed, that would be a form of bullying. So let's say that you're writing with a colored pencil because you forgot your pen at home. Is it really a big deal if you're using a colored pencil? No, of course not. But if someone draws the class's attention to it, and it's clear by their tone that they're doing so to embarrass you, that is a form of bullying. They're not just being cute. They're not just being playful. They are purposely drawing attention to you for a number of reasons. Perhaps it's because they don't like what's going on in their life and they want you to suffer. Perhaps they're jealous of you. Or maybe they're just truly a toxic person. But whatever the case may be, that is a form of bullying. Once you've identified that, you should speak to your teacher or to a counselor and explain what happened. What you do not want to do is become combative and feed into the bully. Keep in mind a lesson from a few weeks ago. Never put your ego ahead of your goal. If your academic goal is to stay on track, 
get the lesson complete, get the work done, then do so. What you do not want to do is possibly derail that goal by feeding into the ego of the bully and finding yourself in some form of conflict. Do not put your goal ahead of your ego. Your ego may tell you to retaliate or say something, but that could lead to more conflict and ruin these academic plans. Instead, stay focused, remember to tell a person in the appropriate position of authority, and let him or her resolve it. There are four types of bullying. The first one would be physical bullying. This is something that we experience sometimes when younger, but certainly lasts into the teenage years, when someone is purposely pushing you, shoving you, kicking you, tapping you with the intention to antagonize you. Remember what you've heard many times before in this class. Do not put your ego ahead of your goal. You do not want to give in to the ego of the bully, fight back, become combative, and then you find yourself in hot water. Do your best to ignore it. I recognize that you guys will probably want to respond. You'll probably feel the need to say something. We are conditioned to think we have to do something in retaliation or we'll be labeled a punk. But in doing so, Actions have consequences. If you give in to the physical attacks or simple nudges of the bully, then you're walking down the path that might lead you astray from your academic goals. So do your best to speak to an authority or someone that you trust. And if it is persistent, learn to get comfortable speaking to someone else or go online to find help. Stopbullying.org is a wonderful asset. It's a wonderful website to help you identify forms of bullying and how to correct it. There's also verbal bullying which is a lot like physical, except this comes in the form of name calling or yelling. It is often persistent and hurtful, just like physical bullying. There is relationship bullying. Okay, sometimes the person that you think is your friend or someone that you think is someone that cares about you is actually spreading a lot of rumors about you. This really also falls under the umbrella of toxic friendship. You have to learn to identify who is really supportive in your life and who is just keeping you around because by putting you down, it raises them up. That's very important for you at this age to identify. And then, of course, there is cyberbullying, which is probably the most important form of bullying to identify and look out for, as it can be conducted by someone who is anonymous and someone who can repeatedly hurt you. And we don't want that to happen, especially as we move into a world where we find more of our presence, whether it be for your future career or your current academics, to be online. So once you've identified that bullying is happening and you're actually being picked on, what is it that you can do to stop it? Well, the first thing that you should do is always be aware, pay attention, be able to discern between when someone is just teasing you or being playful and when someone is purposely trying to bring you down. The other thing to do is don't ignore it. It's very easy at your age to just kind of sweep it under the rug or look the other way because sometimes being responsible and taking a step forward to correct this negativity in your life can be kind of awkward. And we also don't want to burn bridges. And sometimes there's that fear that the bullying will get worse if we do something to correct it. But I assure you that doing nothing is what the bully wants you to do. So by taking a step to correct this and make it better, you'll be relieving yourself of a lot of undue st unnecessary stress and you'll be building your security back up. When you see something, do something. If you see bullying happening to someone who isn't you, you should also go to someone that you trust, a trusted authority like a counselor or a teacher. And if you believe that it is the teacher or the counselor or the coach or an adult who is picking on someone that's making them feel insecure, it's making them feel less than human, then you should go to someone who is above them when it comes to authority. Speak to your parents. Speak to the superintendent of the school. Speak to a teacher that you do trust. Learn to get the appropriate help. And above all things, be a positive force in the life of others. Cyberbullying in this day and age, especially now that we're doing most of our lessons online and you find yourself engaging with others online, is probably one of the most important topics to cover in this lesson of bullying. Cyberbullying would be the use of technology, whether it's internet, email, your cell phone, uh, social media, or pictures that are used to hurt or harm someone else. Let's talk about sending text messages or working with social media. Those are two forms of communication that you use on a daily basis. And while you might think that you are leaving a comment or saying something that is meant to be playful or funny, the person on the other end of that line may find it to be hurtful and they may find it to be a form of bullying. It is not your position and you do not have the authority to determine whether or not that was really just meant to be playful or funny. If someone misinterprets or interprets your text message 
or your comment on social media as being hurtful or a form of bullying, then you are in fact being a bully. Now, not only do you not want to do this because it would be hypocritical to inflict that kind of negativity on someone when you don't want to inflict it on you, but you can also find yourself in a lot of trouble as these things leave behind a trail that can alter or deter in a negative way your ability to get a job or find your way into college. So it's important that as we take this pause in our lesson about bullying to acknowledge that we ourselves do not want to become the bully. Sometimes humor, funny to you, is not funny to someone else. And sometimes a comment that was meant to just be perhaps objective can actually be seen as a form of negativity. I would say the most important advice I can give you when it comes to cyberbullying and leaving comments online so that you don't find yourself in a position of being a bully is to always make the comments positive. There will be times in person, there will be more appropriate times when you can be funny, and I think that when it comes to a person that you're communicating with who you don't know that well, that you don't really know if you can be funny with them, that's your instinct's way of saying, don't try to be funny. If the joke or the comment seems risky, don't send it. It's not worth it. When it comes to cyberbullying, if you yourself feel like you've been the victim of cyberbullying because you think that someone is saying something inappropriate or hurtful and it is repetitive, and it is clearly that the intention is to hurt you or bring you down, it's important that you take a step forward to identify it and recognize it and speak to an authority figure about it. You also have the ability, especially if the form of cyberbullying is something that is racist or sexist or goes against your religion or culture, to speak to the Justice Department about it. I know speaking to the Justice Department seems like it might be dramatic or extreme, but that's what the Justice Department is there for. And you can speak to them about things concerning racial or religious or uh, when it comes to anything related to your culture, uh, that is hurtful. And it is exactly what you should do. You should never think that you have to take this form of bullying. And if you are willing to ignore it, that's fine. But if it bothers you enough that you think about it more than beyond the time that you read it, then it means that it's something that bothers you and that you have the right to speak to someone in a position of authority to make sure that the cyberbullying does not continue. Okay, class, before we wrap up this lesson, I have a video attached to this slide that I think would be very beneficial to you. It's only about five minutes long, so it won't take much of your time. Please click on the link to the right to learn what to do if and when cyberbullying becomes a problem for you. Okay, and last but not least, as I mentioned before, there are things that you can do when you feel that you've been the victim of bullying, no matter what form it comes in. If there's been a crime or someone has been hurt as a result of bullying, call 911 immediately. If someone is feeling hopeless or suicidal, contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which has been included in this slide. And then if the school is not doing enough or the person you spoke to an authority is not doing enough, as I said before, you can contact the superintendent of the school or the State Department of Education or the Justice Department about something that is affecting your ability to learn or live comfortably in your community. I hope that you found these tips to be useful. I hope that moving forward you're able to identify when these things are happening to you or to someone you care about and that you learn to become comfortable to take action to resolve them. Take care.